Well, all right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast here. Uh, my name's Jesse. I host these somewhat regular podcasts on uh, Midgard Musings. For all my listeners and viewers out here on YouTube that are viewing the video version of this, thank you so much for your constant and ongoing support. Um, and just a quick, you know, apology for missing last week. We actually had a podcast lined up last week um, due to some, due to some scheduling conflicts with the the guest myself mainly. Um, it was it was it was it was a, it was a scheduling conflict with myself mainly. Uh, my wife had just been getting in out of town. Um, there were some medical or health concerns with my wife, all of which has been. We're, we're good. Okay. We're good. But, um, so sorry for the, for the absence of last week's, you know, episode, but we're here now and we actually have a really special guest. I, uh, at least I'd like to think so. This is, uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Um, it's going to be a fun one though. It's going to be fun and interesting. Um, as always, if you are not yet a, um, supporter of the podcast on, of your listening platforms, make sure that you upvote or follow the podcast, you know, so whatever platform it is that you're listening on, please be sure to favorite it or upvote it or, you know, just whatever, uh, whatever the platform calls for you to do. Um, please be, um, please consider, you know, upvoting it in that way. And if you want to become a follower or a supporter or a member, what it is, it's a member of the channel on Midgard Musings uh, YouTube channel and actually get the video version of these, then the links for all that are going to be in the show notes of this episode and in all episodes. So check the show notes out. Um, to become a supporter, it's a called member. I keep saying supporter. You're all supporters. I mean, you all support what I do because if you're listening and watching, then you're you're already a supporter, but if you want to help, you know, uh, support the channel uh, monetarily, um, consider becoming a, a member of the Midgard Musings community on Facebook. So, um, just my mic here. So basically what we've got going on today is uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Josh, Josh Kroom. He's going to tell us a little bit about what he is all about. Um, but before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into our intro for the episode, as we always do. So here we go. Right. There you are. Where are you? Where do ye be? There we go. Um, for those that were watching, there was a little bit of a <laughs> we call a hiccup, a technical hiccup. Um, that is a technical term, by the way. A technical hiccup. I work in IT, so I should know. Um, but anyways, here we are um, on the Midgard Musings podcast, Random Heathen Ramblings. Um, if you guys want to be heard, if you guys want to have your voice heard on the Midgard Musings podcast, please consider calling in to the Midgard Musings hotline. That number is 615-671-9832. Uh, leave me a voicemail, and I will... Uh, Put it on a future podcast episode. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you have any ideas, things that you want to have your own voice heard and and, and shared on uh, on the podcast. So um, there's that. There's always also the uh, the free uh, voice message option. You you do get limited uh, to a one minute limit. Um, there's some guys out there that I know called the one minute limit. The one minute, one minute hit it kind of thing. Um, we don't talk about that though here. 
those uh those one minute hit it kind of guys can uh they can go on take a seat somewhere but no so the uh the the voice message option um and once again that's uh usually offered on whatever podcast streaming listening um platform that you're on i know anchor does it which is midgarden anchor.fm slash midgarden musings um, I think Spotify has one. So probably any, almost any other, you know, podcast uh, platform that uh, this podcast is streamed on, you'll, uh, you'll get the option to, to send that. If you just want to send a quick hi or hello or hail or an idea, whatever, and it's a one minute limit, feel free, go right ahead, knock yourselves out. But if you want to, you know, be, uh, be shared on the platform and, and, and have your voice heard on a more extensive level, then definitely please check out the option of calling in. It's just pick up your phone, dial 615-671-9832. And there you go. Also be sure to check out, uh, for all my listeners, you've already heard about the, uh, the Patreon and, and the merchandise for all of my viewers out here. You probably already know about that too. Um, but all the information that I mentioned is, um, is going to be either in the show notes of the episode or in the description of the video. So check all that out when and as you are able to, please. And thank you. So yes, it is good to be back podcasting to all of my fantastic viewers and listeners. Um, we're going to bring in Josh, Josh Kroom. He is the uh, founder and owner of the Father of the Wolves Outdoor Adventures uh company i'm going to hear a bit more about that and get to know a bit about josh i actually know josh from a previous um project that he was involved in and we've maintained communication over the years rather loosely so so to speak um and he is he is heathen or he is pagan um and he and he has this really awesome business that he runs uh reconnecting or helping people to reconnect uh, with the outdoors and a sort of outdoor adventure lifestyle uh, sort of thing. So I don't want to speak too much without him being here um, to, to speak on it, because I'm really excited to know more about what Father of the Wolves Outdoor Adventures is. Um, it's all going to be, all of his business information is going to be linked to uh, this episode. So check the show notes, check the description, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Um, but let's go ahead and welcome Josh um josh Kroon to the podcast here we go yeah folks all right so like i said here we are uh i've got josh Kroon with me joined uh all the way out there in uh somewhere in the mountains north carolina i'm gonna say i'm gonna venture to say is that is that accurate <laughs> it's uh foothills but uh um, foothills I, yeah i'm the foothills but yeah, i'm actually, glad you lived up that way for a little while i'm glad you say foothills because i'm from i'm from uh up well i'm not even from upstate new york but i'm i'm from long island and i moved to like the the lower foothills of the catskill mountain range okay so when everybody's like oh you live in the mountains i'm like no man they're the foothills you want to go to the mountains you got to go out to like the rockies or you got to go up to <laughs> like those are mountains man you know the, the appalachia uh mountain range like those are mountains down like over here like right. this is this is like you know uh this is like the calluses on rip van winkle's toes this ain't nothing <laughs> you know well, so i i actually live in a town uh here in north carolina called king's mountain okay. all right and so it <laughs> there's there is that mountain another one called crowder's mountain um and it's it's I, to me because i grew up in this area so it's it's more like bluffs man you know it's just like <laughs> Just like mm -hmm. a little mountain, like a little hill that sits up high enough that they could call it a mountain. And, yeah. uh, you know, and there's state parks and there's hiking and there's some camping. And, you know, so many people, because I'm just outside the Charlotte area. Okay. So, uh, but I can get to, you know, Appalachian in about an hour and a half, which is what I love because I, I was living up there for a while. Uh, yeah. So I didn't want to get too far away from it. Yeah. But, uh, so many people like run to the Crowder's Mountain or the King's Mountain, like, oh, I hiked this mountain today. And I'm like, no. I gotta do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> and I you are. 
you yeah. are doing something about it, which is which is which is like the large, larger scale uh, reason why why you're even here today. So, you know, just for everybody's uh, edification, for everybody's understanding, um, I've known Josh uh, here now for um, we were just talking about this before you you came on. Uh, the biggest part of three, maybe four, between three and four years, and and this the uh, the way that we met, you know how how we kind of became friends, as it were, um, was a, was a bit of an interesting tale, um, but uh, it, it had to do with a musical project, a band. I know you still are are pretty active with like musical stuff, like you've got yes. projects and stuff. But so for everyone's edification, if you wouldn't mind, just share a little bit about who you are. Um, we're going to get into kind of why you're here in just a minute, but uh, yeah, okay. just tell everybody a little bit, you know, I know you're here because this is a random heathen ramblings podcast <laughs> and you, uh, you, you tend to uh, gravitate or identify as a, as a heathen yourself, but yeah, introduce yourself to the, to the fine people out here. So uh, Josh Kroom, I have been raised outdoor uh, pretty much my whole life, um, spend 90% of my time outdoors uh even my professional career that I, that pays the bills uh involves being outdoors um and then as as you were saying you know we met through music um i'm in multiple musical projects um we met through uh my black metal project which has yeah. changed names since <laughs> since we last met you know we right. went through a, a whole rebranding since then um that is known as Teresa runa now um then I'm also in a death metal project uh, called Mafia, which actually uh, one of the members is from Venezuela, and he nice. moved here to America about four years ago, and the project was active there. So when him and his family uprooted and came here, he instantly was like, I can't let this project go. So he wanted to get it, keep it going, and he met all the founding members. Um, and uh, the bass player, which is also in Teresa Runa with me, um, they had a little issue with a singer that they had at the time and uh, called me up and said, hey, can you help us with a show? And I was only going to help them with their CD release show. And then they said, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, hey, will you join us full time? Um, so wow. I have those two active music projects as well as I am working on a solo project called Skogamar, uh, which will be Nordic Folk. Um, been mm. diving into a, a lot of folk instruments and learning and causing myself headaches, but for the best mm. part, because I love it, uh, I've, I've known to take instruments hiking on my. Sit on top of a mountain and, you know, beat myself up playing these things and learning them so that I can get that project uh, out there. Yeah. That's funny um, that you mentioned instruments taking hiking. I um, I just acquired a a uh, a bison skin drum uh, from a very very talented um, craftsman, and um, I, I I went on a recent hike in my area. You know, it, nothing nothing fancy. It's 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 pretty pretty uh, beginner level. Just you know flat trails, maybe some, you know, dips and spikes or whatever in the terrain, but all in all, it was about a five mile hike, but I was like, I got, I had the drum with me and I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like record anything per se, but I ended up stopping along, um, uh, on the return, you know, trip with, uh, by the water. Cause it was, you know, it, it, it's a flowing river, creek, right. whatever. And just, you know, beating on the drum over the water and stuff like that. And it's, uh, it's therapy, man. Like it's, yes. it's, it's very therapeutic come to find yeah. out, you know, me it's, not being a musician, but. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's, that's what I found in it. Um, and it. And it's a big inspiration behind that, my solo project. Cause um, I do the same thing. It's just, you get out there, man, you're sitting there, you're, I call it in my environment. If I'm in the forest, you know, where I'm in the mountains or just the backyard, uh, you know, that's, that's where I'm most happy, man. So, and then yeah. music is a big part of my life. So when I bring the two together, you know, and it's like I said, some of the instruments, like I have a tall hopper that I, I am currently mm. 
man, it's kicking my butt. I'm not even going to lie about it. But, <laughs> I, you know, I just, I've always been obsessed with the sounds of it. Um, but, you know, I, I got a little bag and I take them and I just sit there. Um, and then sometimes my job keeps me on the road and which me being me, I'm like, uh, I don't even want a hotel. I'm just going to go camp and I take instruments. <laughs> and recently Damn. I was uh, sent to Jacksonville, Florida. And I pick, I found a campground and it had like alligator infested waters on one side and then it had the ocean on the other side. And I was just what? like, so yeah, man, it was like, like this is an cool. awesome experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like whatever, whatever the hell with a Marriott. Give me, give, <laughs> me the, give me the swamps. Give me the money. <laughs> exactly, man. Like, dude, like I'd sit around a campfire and like was like feeding like raccoons things, you know, like they're like running up and just like oh, getting it basically man. out of my hand. Uh, you know, and I know that's bad. Some people are like, oh, no, don't feed the wildlife. Okay. I mean, they're trash pans, man. They, they literally eat trash out of the dumpster. So, at least yeah, they like, you know, as long as you don't, dumpster. yeah, as long as you don't feed them anything <laughs> toxic, man, like they don't, right. care. that's cool. Like, right. you're just at that point, you're just like connecting with nature. Exactly, man. You know, but there was this one moment, man, because I, um, I don't have a drum to say, like, I, I'm actually jealous of your drum, man. I've seen you post that thing, and I was like, that is yeah. beautiful. You got to um, get one. You got to get um, one. You got to, um, you know, get well, one. Well, it's going to happen. It's on the <laughs> list, man. I've seen that. And then you're like, Buffalo's. I'm like, oh, man, come on. Like, yeah. I got to I, I gotta check that out. But yeah. um, I just got like a, a tom drum. And I took that out on the ocean and uh, or on the beach. It's like at night. It was dark by the time I got back. And I sat there. There was no one on the beach, man. Mm. And I was just sitting there playing that. And I was recording it listening to the ocean waves and i was like mm. all right this is probably one of those things like i'm gonna have to put in the project like i gotta save the sound clip because mm -hmm. just hearing the oceans clap you know the what the waves clash man and the beating of the drum it was it was fun man it was I, I don't know how long i was out there uh i just got lost in it man was just having myself a good time yeah man that the time doesn't uh time doesn't translate the same when you are out there in nature you know, right. at least not for me. Like I went on that five mile hike and I'm like, man, I've been walking forever. <laughs> and I had an app or whatever that was, that was tracking my, you know, miles or whatever. Right. And my, of course, you know, my time or whatever. And at the end of it all, I'm like, I made it back home and I was like, wow, two and a half hours and five miles later, I was like, I feel like I just, you know, walked half the earth or, or whatever. It's like, you almost, you know, I think at some I don't know how you feel because like, this is kind of like, it's, it's more of a, it's more than just a hobby for you, right? right. Like being outdoors, like it's, 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 it's a lifestyle. Um, and it's actually something that you're looking to, at least in my understanding, it's like it, it, a livelihood as it were, you've got a business. We're going to talk about father of the wolves, outdoors, advent, outdoor adventures um, here in just a second, but you, your, your sense of time gets skewed, right? It could either yeah. go by so quick, or you can be like, I've been out here forever. Um, but you've only been out there for, you know, a minute, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, right? It just, right. It's so strange how time just shifts. It, it, and, it, and, it, and that was, um, just kind of the idea for me, for the business was, you know, a lot of people get consumed in their fast paced life, man, of go to work, take care of your kids, take care of the house, do, a, do all these normal things. Uh, and a lot of times people you know they may make time for themselves just sit down to watch like a football game or something mm -hmm. um that's not me for me it's i got to go outdoors if if i'm stranded indoors for a long period of time man i start going crazy like <laughs> and mm. that was the thing is i was like more people should experience the outdoors and in my time because business um officially you know I made it more of an official thing, uh, started in 2020, but it's actually been wow. behind the scenes for years. Um, for years, I've took people on adventures and taught them things and showed them things, uh, or if people see me, hey, I see you went did this. I've never done that. Can I go try that sometime with you? Um, and that's kind of how the business kind of came about. It was, you know, like, hey, what if I do this more than just every once in a while? Um, because like, like we're saying, man, there, there's something about being out there where that time is just zooming by, um, mm -hmm. you know, I spent nine hours on the lake kayaking up in the mountains <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, it didn't feel like nine hours to me. 
you know, yeah. towards the end, I mean, nine hours, you know, rolling, you start feeling, you know, the burn. I think I've been out here for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you start feeling the burn. But, you know, it was one of those things like I felt like I could go another nine hours. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, even my body was starting to feel tired, but mentally, I was so happy. Charged. I didn't care, man. And, you know, there was even a storm coming in, and like I even got like smashes of rocks, man. I felt like I was on a dragon boat fighting for my life there, for <laughs> man. Man, that <laughs> but, is uh, crazy. It was fun, man. Um, you know, so yeah, that was. It's nature is just beautiful, man. And there's a lot of people in this world that I feel is missing out on that. Um, and I do get a lot of clients that are city driven people who are, they have no clue. They have no clue what to do. They don't know what to wear, what to bring, where to yeah. go, what app to trust or what directions from Google is to trust. And, mm. you know, can I take them and I show them things that they've never seen in their life? You know, I had a client two weeks ago. Uh, the guy has never been out of the city. Um, took him on a, a camping adventure, showed him the Blue Ridge Parkway for the first time in his life. Showed wow. him a huge waterfall that he's like, man, I've only seen this in like commercials. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and man, I sat back and I watched him just light up as he watched this waterfall, man. And it, it's a magical moment when I see the clients like that, that are, they're just, they're overwhelmed with excitement because this is something mm. they've never seen before. And they never knew it was, as amazing or to be as appreciated as it is or it needs to be yeah so, fun stuff. that's tremendous <laughs> i think you do you, i think you're doing a great thing so it's father of the wolves outdoor adventures you've got a facebook page mm-hmm. you've got a according to your facebook page you've got a a big cartel uh yeah. website and you've got a, a an email for i guess for booking sessions or booking right. adventures and stuff so is there anything else out here for people to find you or is that it so no no they're actually i will be shutting down the big cartel i've actually got an actual website being built and it will be father to gotcha. um it is being but it's constructed. not accessible yet not accessible that- yet it's being okay. built right now uh i just got a, a sample of it about a week ago to kind of show me their layouts um, and it's definitely going to be a one for all. They can go there. They'll see all the different packages I have. Um, gotcha. and that way they can book through there. Cause what I, one thing that I'm not changing. So how I book and how they did it to pass with big cartel and through the email is after, you know, the deposit or the payment is received, uh, we set up a zoom meeting. And nice. I go yeah, and I go through with them. I also have forms that they fill out, which the website, I'm going to have the forms automatically on there so they can fill them out and then ship them in as they're doing their payment. Um, and it's basically just simple questions like, have you ever been camping? Are you physical fit? Do you have any health issues? Uh, yeah. Are you terrified of snakes? Are you allergic to bees? <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you go to the bathroom in the woods without an actual bathroom around? <laughs> you know, it's, bunch of temperature checks kind of deal right right because you know i you know i as a business as a business you're always going to protect yourself but you also got to protect your your clients and of course the one thing i want to know is i want to know these important things about my clients before we go on this adventure because i have adventures picked all over that some are extreme for the people who what <laughs> so i have like a couple that are like working their way up, you know, and they're working mm-hmm. their way to the bigger, harder, you know, task. And yeah. then for the people who are already experienced and they're just like, hey, they want to go out know. there and they want to like, you know, like wear a snake for a belt and wrestle raccoons and and, and, <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> right. Like. They want to howl back at the coyotes, man. So, <laughs> uh, you know, so I have so many different packages and, you know, we fill out, so they fill out the forms and then we do a Zoom meeting. Um, and once we do the Zoom meeting, it's, you know, it's a face-to-face, hey, this is who I am. I tell them a little bit about me, you know, and find out a little bit about them. So that way we're not complete strangers now, you yeah. know. And, um, There's a level of trust you got to build, I assume, right? right. With, with, exactly. with when, when you do stuff like this, because, I mean, you're a guide, as right. it were. You are a physical guide into the outdoors for potentially people that 
like you've mentioned previously, that have never experienced anything remotely close to this. Exactly. So they're putting their entire trust in you, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. So I, and, and, you know, and that's, you know, and I tell them, you know, after we meet, it's like, hey, that's, that's the whole point of these forums and stuff. Because if it is not uncommon for us to run across a rattlesnake. And if sure. I run across a rattlesnake and a little background of me, I used to breed reptiles as a hobby. So, mm. and uh, venomous wow. was one of my favorite things to have. So it's not really? uncommon for me to pick up a rattlesnake. So <laughs> look so, at you, man. You're like the freaking <laughs> snake whisperer over here or something. Man, I don't know. I like love, love animals, man. I love animals yeah. in general, dude. So, and uh, I, and I've always tend to go for the animals that, um, people are terrified of or <laughs> yeah you know they just a buddy a of mine rep. a buddy of mine he's got two scorpions nice. you ever dealt you ever dealt with them i i've had a few scorpions yes he's got a japanese forest scorpion which is i think they look menacing but they're not right to you know they like they look like they're going to kill you but they're just like big softies more or less <laughs> as far as the arachnid uh thing goes but and then he's got another one that's like three times smaller than the forest scorpion. He's like, that's some bitch. That, she'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> right, man, dude. Uh, dude. I used to have bird-eating tarantulas, man. I've, I've had all kinds of crazy things, man. Wow. But, yeah, so, you know, uh, that's one of the things I let them know is like, hey, I can identify snakes. And, you know, if I'm on a trail, especially a trail that's traveled a good bit, you know, if I see copperheads or rattlesnakes, man, I, I move them, take mm -hmm. them away from the trail. That way no one gets hurt. You know, that way yeah. no one's taking the chance of getting hurt. The snake's got, not going to get hurt. The human's not going to get hurt. Um, you know, so I try to find out these things because, you know, I don't want to take someone out and then they see a snake and then all of a sudden they run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, this is, this is, right. <laughs> like, you know, this is, you know, this is where they live. We're just kind of walking through their home more or less you know exactly. and hey you might you might run across them and how do you deal with it exactly and you know so i try to find out those things and you know a lot of these things too just simple as can you go to the bathroom in the forest that mm. is a, a big problem for a lot of people that i run into is like uh what do you mean uh i'm like yeah there's you know if you want to actually go primitive camping we're not going to have a bathroom access. So. No, it's hug, hug a tree, man. Like, <laughs> right, man. Or whatever. Give you a shovel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you a shovel and some wipes, and there you go, man. And, uh, you know, so you, you know, there's a lot of things. Like, I, it took time uh, when I started, when I, when I realized I wanted to make this a business, you know, um, I had to go through all the years in my head and all the people that I've already took on these adventures and think about all these things that, that has came up and happened and how I can get ahead of that with new clients. Um, mm. You know, and also, you know, safety is a thing. Um, of course. Uh, last year we, I have, so let me start back a little bit. I have one of my best friends, man. I met him seven years ago. Um, he is a city guy, never been outdoors, uh, invited him on a trip. And man, I tell you like, if anything could have ever went wrong on his first trip, it did happen. Like Murphy's um, Law. <laughs> right, right. Well, my thing is, so with my business, and before anyone was listening to this, so for my business, I'm not, I don't take any clients somewhere that I have not been um, and that I, <laughs> that I know very well. Sure. Um, I, you know, if it's myself or like one of my friends, then we're going to go venture new places because I am all the time checking out new places to add to the list. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the ones where another friend was there and we're like, oh, he'll be fine. We're going to go to a new place. So we took him to this whole place. We'd never been. Uh, the trail was misleading. It never got us to the destination to the water. Uh, we stepped past a timber rattlesnake. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, man. Dude, like. Just like walked over him. Down. Like the suck it was just like laying there chilling. He's like, oh, yeah. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was actually in October. By the way, I'm a rattlesnake. Chicka, 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 right. chicka, 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 whatever. Yeah, it was October. She was actually cold, so I was able to pick her up, get her off the Oh, trail. dormant, yeah. Okay. Right. So, you know, it was like she didn't even start rattling until I got her set down. Then she woke up and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, yeah, man, dude, it was like, 
oh man so miles of hiking to nowhere having a bad track we went through all kinds of stuff man and i finally just found a place made camp then it started pouring down rain so it was like anything that could have made this guy oh. never want to go in the woods again should have and he has turned out to be uh one of my friends that I can say, yo, I'm about to take a big group. Do you want to tag along? And he's like, Hey man, I'm there. It takes off work. He's a uh, full-time tattoo artist. He'll take a day off and we, we go out. Really? But, um, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. So get to that, man. It was like, you know, I take him, he, he helps me. We were, um, on a trip. We had two guys that had never been doing this stuff before. Uh, primitive camping, hike to a waterfall. A lady had fell off the top of the mountain. Um, and cor- yeah, her mother's standing there like, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, uh, straight down the mountain. And I, I just immediately like, even though they weren't my clients, man, I, I'm, I'm friends of the force is what I call it. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, this lady needs help. Uh, you know, and he looks at me because I'm already like breaking the gear off. And he's like, I'm with you. So I give these other two guys like, hey, you stand here. And, and, and I know one of them very well. He's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, gave him a walkie talkie. And we start running down the trail because it's so steep. We had to go back down the trail. Then we had to hike through a creek to get to this mm. woman. Uh, we were scaling logs like 10, 15 feet above the ground. Like it was just just nasty thick forest. Uh, Thor decides to strike his hammer. Thunder and lightning striking everywhere, man. Oh, well, like, then you know, then you know it's like, all right, yeah, it's all it's, right now. Yeah, it was like meant to be, man. Uh, I, we make it to the lady. She had broken ankle, and a stick had ripped the whole back of her calf. Um, wow, so she was in bad shape. Uh, you know, patched her up as best I could, give her water because she kept trying to pass out. We were with her like four hours until EMT even got there. So. So hold up, hold on just a second. Uh, Are you saying that if you hadn't been in the right place at the right time, that this person could have died? Yes. Yeah, the ENT actually told me that, that had we had not got there, because we were so far without signal. There was, um, there was another, he was a father and a husband. He was panicking, wanting to help. And you know, he had his family with him. And I, and I looked at the guy and I was like, Hey man, if you can help me by going back to your car, driving till you get signal and call 911, we will be with her. Yeah. You know, Cause I didn't, I didn't want to put this man's family in jeopardy. You know, I was like, Hey man, right. he, he, well, he was in a, a frantic mode. Like he was ready to jump off. the side Panic of this mode. Mountain. Yeah, yeah. He was about to jump off the side of this mountain. Adrenaline, like, everything. Right. Yeah. You know, and I was like, Whoa, man, this is how you can help. Um, and so, yeah, we were with her for four hours before EMT actually made it to us. And they had to repel lines down and a gurdy, and then they come down and we helped them. Uh, we also helped carry her out of the trail uh, halfway. They had a team meet us halfway um, through that. But they did tell us that, hey, if we wouldn't have been for us, that it could have went really more, you know, serious and worse. Wow. So, you know. One of those you just you're there in a moment. Luckily, I know some basic first aid things, so <laughs> I was just jumped right into it, man, and to help her out and roll on. So, so hopefully on adventures, you know, you don't always run into that, but sometimes, man, you know, you're in the wilderness, you trip something as easy as tripping over a rock. Oh yeah, it causes a serious injury. Mud, man. mud is slippery, man. Rocks <laughs> when they're wet, it's like ice. It's like glass, man. Um, right. So, you know, everybody that's listening and or watching, um, Father of the Wolves Outdoor Adventures, the um, the Facebook page is going to be added to the show notes and to the um, description. But um, Father of the Wolves Outdoors at gmail.com is how anybody in the area that would want to contact you directly can can do that. Is that is that, that is correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this, 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 uh, this little, I never, like, I didn't know about this. Like, that's some serious, like, this is, this, this is the kind of stuff that you would like watch on TV. Um, 
on on like you know cnbc or something and be like yeah man like this guy just like found this woman off the side of a mountain and if it wasn't for them she'd be dead like you saved the woman's life you saved the person's life and your um your knowledge and your uh awareness of of, of how to survive in the wilderness literally saved the life and and that right there, ladies and gentlemen, you know, listening and watching, like that's a that's a testament to to Josh's uh, abilities. Um, I think if it, you know if he had any questions about is this guy legit, I think he's too legit <laughs> to quit. But, I mean, I'm, that I'm too legit to quit, man. I can't give up on the outdoors and helping people, uh, you know, learn about it and see it for what it needs to be seen as. So I think it's really wild, dude. That you you were you were mentioning a while earlier that everything kind of went official for you in right. 2020, which right. as we all know, was an absolute shit storm of events. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. It, 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 right. <laughs> and, and so like, how do you, like, where do you go from there? Like 2020, let me, let me start, let me launch a business. Let me launch something that like, do you think that that was, fortuitous and timing because the way the world was at the time like hey like now's a perfect time for people to get into this or was it just like well it's now or never or just what was going through your mind at the time like i'm just so, that, that's that's wild well one of the thing is you know obviously being as active musician as i am uh 2020 basically like ran just everything music in the world straight to the gutters man mm. um so uh my main band Therese runa we instantly, you know, we went through a rebrand and we started like, you know, we're just going to restart over and we're going to rewrite and do a whole new album. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, we can't play shows. We played like three shows for the whole year. Uh, so we was like, well, I was like, man, like, you know, like we were talking before I came on, man, I, I am a creature of staying busy. I can't not stay busy. Yeah. And, you know, for years, it's been on my mind to launch this as a full-time business. Um, you know, like my friend I was just talking about that was there to help me with the lady that, you know, <laughs> who I've turned into this like outdoor monster himself, man. You know, this guy's yeah. always beginning to go out. Um, and we were on a venture and one day he was just like, man, it's, it's time, bro. Like you need to get this out there. You need to take off with it. And Light I was the fires like, and kick the tires. Right, man. So, you know, <laughs> I was like, you know what? And I'm, and I'm outside, right? So I'm all the time hiking or camping. And for the first time in my entire life, man, I go to two state parks in 2020 and I can't even get in because there's a line of people because of the at capacity bullshit rules that's been going on. Oh, wow. And I'm talking about like, you know, it didn't matter what day of the week I went to this state park, I could get indoors. And now for the first time, I'm either sitting, going to sit here for three hours waiting for this to clear out, or I'm going to not get in. And hmm. so I was like, now's the time, man. People, they can't go to bars. They hmm. can't go to music venues. So people are trying to explore the outdoors. Hmm. Um, and, you know, like everything weighed on me. How many times did people ask me, well, where can I go do this? Or what do I buy? What do I wear? And I was like, now's the time. This is the perfect time. Because, yeah, I have a professional career that pays the bills. But one day, maybe this could take that place. If I don't start it now, like you said, it's now or never. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm either going to sink or I'm going to swim. And never in my life I've ever sunk. I've always swam. So <laughs> yeah. I continue to try to swim, man. And, I, and yeah. I do the same for this business. You know, I'm constantly evolving and adding more to it. But, yeah, man, it was. It was one of those take a chance in 2020 because why the hell not? 2020 is, is that's a shit crazy. show. But let's see what happens. Yeah, and I think that's really uh, that really speaks a lot. So it, it speaks a lot to your to your character, to your um, you know you as an individual and your approach to life. Um, but you know, you and I've been uh, you know we 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 established a, a friendship or relationship years ago. Um, and at the time, what it was, was purely on like the music level. And then over the years, as right. we've remained connected through social media, 
because again, I'm in Tennessee, you're in North Carolina. It's not like we talk to each other face to face. Um, <laughs> you know, I just, we, I notice a lot of your social media posts and I see a lot of heathen related things. And I'm like, man, you know, the guy is wearing a hammer. He's big into the outdoors. He's, you know, playing freaking Nordic folk instruments that he may or may like that, that that's causing him to pull his hair out proverbially or you know what I mean and <laughs> and and so it, it it like elicits a question you know like how much of that how much of you know your the how much of of, of Norse or Germanic heathenry plays a factor into your uh approach to this business and if any if you're willing to talk about it you know and 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 was it always there did it like that was a was a of uh an ember kind of sparked into a fire i just I'm, i guess i'm curious as much as everybody listening and watching is like what's the deal with that <laughs> to talk about it you know oh absolutely man yeah so for me um Season started actually really early, really early in my life. Um, you know, back when you could probably 12, 13, man, I have always been as obsessed with Scandinavia and its culture and learning about it. And, you know, I was always um, studying mythology. Uh, mm. And, you know, the common, common thing taught in school is obviously Greek mythology. Um, but of course I found my love interest in Norse mythology. And mm -hmm. when you, when you start looking at their stories, you know, obviously both have similarities and they have their differences, but to me, the Norse spoke more as far as being like, as we were talking about the outdoors and having to me, I felt like has way more appreciation for wildlife, the wilderness and the outdoors. And that, that and, and sense in the whole is who I am. Um, I always respect nature to its fullest. Mm -hmm. um, so it started at a very young age um, throughout the years. Always loved it. You know, I, even one of my past bands, um, I wrote a whole album. <laughs> it was all Viking themed. Uh, it was really? a, it was actually a death core. Yeah, it was a death core album, man. We even had a shirt of a guy designed on it. It was ass. Oh, so. wow. So, you know, very, like I said, it's, it's, it's been a thing for me. This wasn't something that, you know, a year or two ago, I just like, oh, this is who I am. Hop on a bandwagon. Bingo, and man. It, you know, like, I don't, well, I don't. Vikings is popular. Let me just man. cash in on this sort of thing. You know? <laughs> right, dude. It, it, so, so it has its pros, right? Because we can obviously now get shirts and juries a lot easier, you know, so it it's has. Trending. Its, right man it's trending so you can obviously get your hands on things a little bit easier but then it's just like ah uh, now i see a guy wearing you know the hammer and i'm like you watch the show vikings don't you <laughs> you do you, yeah you get that you know like well why are you wearing it you know are you are, <laughs> do, do, do you like the show t you know do you like the tv show or are you about it right and then are they you start telling it? you how what are you about you know there's always that there's like it's like it's like layers of an onion you got to peel away at the layers to understand and i feel like with you man like so much of what this religion uh as we could identify it um kind of captures is a very macho hyper masculine sort of thing which right. to it to a large degree to me is, 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 is toxic, you right. know, because there's no gender here. Like this is not, it's, it's just for the guys and it's just for the dudes. And <laughs> Oh man, I'm a beard. I got a beard, you know, I'm a beard, but like, like right. that, that's how like, I feel like some people just like walk around like, yeah, I, I, I can grow a great beard. And I, you know, I've, I, I bought this awesome hammer from a Swedish company. Um, and, and, you know, hail Odin, but right there's there's obviously way more layers to that and that's superficial and it's on the surface the 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 deeds the action the what you do right right connecting to nature getting back to the way our ancestors exactly. literally lived day to day like this wasn't like a thing that they just like decided to do one day it's what they had to do to survive exactly and how yeah. we connect with that 
how we reconnect with that, you know? And I feel like you, I feel like what you're offering in our, in our region of the country is, is providing people, whether they're heathen or not, because let's face it, it's not a heathen facing business, even though a lot of your branding and aesthetic tends to um, capture that it's not exclusive to people focusing on that. I'm sure. I mean, maybe you want to speak to that. You, you welcome clients from any walks of life that just want to get back to nature, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, and that was the thing when I came up with the name, obviously, uh, Penrith basically father of the wolves. Um, but also because I, and you, you know, that I have a wolf hybrid that's been in my life for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was when I was coming up with, what am I going to name this business? You know, it, I could not get around it at all to not go in this direction. I tried, man. I tried to make yeah. it something all catchy with, you know, some pine trees here. And, I, man, and it just was like, huh. And you start looking. And, and, I, and that's what I did was I was looking at other businesses. Because really in this region, there's not many tour guides. There's some that take, you know, the Appalachian Trail, and they, that's all they do. And that, I commend them. I think that's awesome as well because they do, you know, very similar work. Um, but there's just not really many. But when you, so I just look in other areas, and you know, it's same. It's the catchy like, here's some trees, and let's go wilderness uh, outtakes or something. You know, and it's just like, yeah, I, I couldn't get around it, man. Um, yeah. And so my friend that I've been talking about that I, I've helped evolve into this outdoor must he you know he's a tattoo artist and he he helped design or he did design that and he took an image so that imagery is of me with my uh wolf dog we were up in the mountains up on this cool looking tree uh he took that and laid it and then you know gave me the mountains and uh the symbols and everything around it and, and it, it was just when he sent it i was like that's it like i love it uh yep, there we go <laughs> I was like, for everybody, perfect, for man. all the for all the Midgard Musings um, uh, members, this is this is what what Josh is talking about, right? So for everybody listening, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to head over to his Facebook page. Maybe <laughs> you're not a Facebook guy or gal. This right. is what we're talking about. But you know, th- this is the you know you got the uh, what is it the uh, uh, Agus Yomer? No. Well, yeah. Vegas here. It's the the Vegas the, Vegas here. Yep. The, the Nordic compass with the mountains, and that that that's a artistic representation of you and your wolf hybrid, right? Right. And having you know the compass was a big part. You know, it's because if you go back and like, again, you look at outdoor companies, they'll just have your basic north, south, east, west compass, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it made sense to slap that there. Give me a little bit of mountains in the back, then the font, and then you know, I, it was beautiful. I was like, "Yep, that's it. Like that's that's just the directions we're going. That's it. I'm happy, and we're going with it." That wolf's actually in here now. She's just passed out sleeping behind the camera, but <laughs> she's, <laughs> but she's been a she's been a big part of my life, man. Uh, she she'll be ten this year, and uh, I've had her since she was uh, ten months old, and. I researched having a wolf hybrid for three years before I made the commitment because they they are a different breed. High maintenance, your, maybe. Yeah, they're not your average dog, man. Um, <laughs> however, it she is the friendliest, most goofiest animal you could ever meet. You know, uh, but you know she she's very picky about things. Like she, man, she loves the outdoors. Like she sees the hiking bag. Dude, she's spinning she's ready like all about she's it how, yeah she's howling at me man she's ready to go um you know some trips i don't get to take her and she just like gives me big pouty faces but but uh she uh she's a great asset to have um there's even been times where she sniffed out other animals and one time she sniffed out a bear um uh, and she alerted wow. me and one of my friends one time didn't believe it. Like, what do you mean she alerts you? Blah, blah, blah. Because she's like really a quiet animal. Uh, she's excited. She does her woo-woo howls and stuff. And uh, we were sitting around a campfire. And what she does is she starts sniffing the air. And then she, when she pins it where it's at, she looks back at me. And then she'll go back. And then she'll look back at me. And then she does it until I pay attention. 
Mm. And sure enough, man, we shined a spotlight in the direction. And there was a black bear, <laughs> like hanging out. Mm. Man, and I'm like, yeah, believe me now. <laughs> I'm like, she's she's great at alerting, man. So I, I try to take her on every adventure I can. She's but, she's yeah. she's she's all part of it. I mean, she's she's part of the branding you know oh, yeah. uh for goodness definitely. sake and you know like and she's literally part of it so it definitely fits it 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 fits like like a glove you know yeah, exactly. like it just it's yeah. it's it's perfect so you know for anybody that is um like what is your reach just out of curiosity like do do you do you have like a limit, like, hey, you know, within 500 miles of the Charlotte, North Carolina area, or is it just like, hey, if you're in the area and you want to go excursion, you know, uh, on an, on an excursion right. or on an adventure, it's like, it doesn't matter. Just hit me so up it, kind of thing or. Well, yeah. And it's, it's predominantly, um, predominantly North Carolina, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people don't think of South Carolina having some mountains, but they do. And they reach down there, fact, sure. Man, they have one of the most gorgeous lakes down there where waterfalls are falling into the, the lake. Um, so, and I try to come up to Tennessee as much as I can. Um, nice. I actually, my family's from Elizabeth, and I don't, that's probably what, a couple hours from you? Yeah, I think that, that's a uh, uh, Johnson City up in that Yeah, area. That's, that's like uh, Northeast northeast of us so okay. you're yeah you know, like johnson city yeah like you're about two three hours so approximately um, so yeah i do a little bit of there um virginia um just over okay. the state line there's a few areas up that way if they're closer to that side and they want to go that way um and then georgia as well i've done some exploring last year scoping out a few cool places man and and Georgia was one of those places that, you know, I was always going to Atlanta. I can't stand Atlanta. So Atlanta. like Atlanta. Yeah, right. So Georgia always kind of like <laughs> had a bad taste in my mouth. And I don't mean to offend anyone from Georgia. It was just it was Atlanta, man. I'm always sitting in traffic or something. But oh, yeah. their mountain region uh is spectacular, man. They have some beautiful scenery up there. So yeah, I, what's that? Uh, what's that? What's that place? Um, it's a big. I mean, it's a it's a big attraction. It's got. It's like a. Uh, Hell of the dragon. Talking about that. It may not be necessarily that, but it's got the whole. It's like a civil war carving on the side of the mountain. You know what I'm talking about? Was it? Uh, oh, is it man, stone? What's this? What is the name stone of that? Mountain? It, stone Mountain. Okay. <laughs> so like, yeah, and he was like. Like no disrespect, but Josh was like, "Yeah, okay, Stone Mountain, woohoo." You know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, like whatever, dude. Don't, don't I'm just like saying, that, like man. that don't that like the, that. the 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 terrain up in that area is like it's impressive. Um, but you're all over here, like Tale of the Dragon. I'm like, oh no, you know the the the, the, the sphincter <laughs> of the Griffin. No, that's what well, I'm talking about. But <laughs> well, so many people, man, like the Tale of the Dragon, because you know I'm also like I ride Harley's, man. So okay. Um, and so one of the trails that I, so one of my packages, um, I, we go camping and I'm a guide for whitewater rafting on, um, I That's work intense. with this, dude, it's fun stuff, man. Uh, was able to link up with this campground. They do a whole package deal. And then I'm the like, Hey, I'm the guy in the back. Let's go. Um, but it's right off the tail of the dragon, man. So like all day long, like you're seeing, you know, million dollar sports cars run up and down, packs of motorcycles, man. That's a very popular going up the Fontana Dam and all that. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But, uh, it's one of them, like, you know, be careful when you're doing that. If you're, even if you're just in your normal vehicle, like in just a family car, you got to watch, man, the people, they're up there to, to haul ass around them curves, man. And oh, yeah. it's dangerous. But, dude, a lot of people die every year out there. So that's kind of like the place of the, New York where I'm where I grew up not necessarily where I'm from but like the Delaware River okay. um uh, a lot of the 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 Solomon County New York if you ever go yeah. up north um and you, and you decide to explore some of those areas up in there you know around like uh 
just you know, like Sullivan County, New York, you know, you, uh, the Basha Kill. Okay. Um, that, that whole area. Um, same way, like they, they filmed, you know how like they film car commercials where it's like super windy, treacherous roads and cars <laughs> are like, <laughs> you know, just winding through. Like they film car commercials up in those areas. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, I got and it, it's how it hangs in this turd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's the same kind of stuff, man. It's the same kind of stuff. So if you ever like, if you ever venture far up north that way, um, exciting stuff. But yeah, for everybody that's in like you know, let's say North Carolina, maybe South Carolina, Virginia, Northeast Tennessee, parts of Georgia, um, definitely check out Father of the Wolves outdoor adventures on facebook all that's going to be linked um in the show notes and in the description if you want to reach out to josh directly it's going to be father of the wolves outdoors at gmail.com again linked in the show notes and in the description um he's your guy i mean he's your guy and he's your guide um <laughs> to my understanding, because the man literally saved the woman's life. I don't know how much more, like if you need that on a piece of paper, you, you heard it here and you saw it here. <laughs> um, it, that, 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 that's all the credibility that I would need. Like, yep, that's fine. Um, you know, the world could be crashing down around me. And if I'm out stuck in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, sorry for the language, <laughs> but uh, and and Josh is here. He's 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 he he's he's got me. You know. I will find you food. I will build you shelter and build you a fire. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll be good. So, um, Josh, I really appreciate um, the 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 level of 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 candidness. You know how much you were able to and willing to share about not only what you what you do as far as a business goes, but kind of touching a little bit into your heathenry. Um, as we wrap the podcast up, there's there's this segment where we uh, talk about uh, or we pick like a random stanza of the Havamal. So, you know, as you as you've expressed and as you know, uh, Havamal being a pretty popular uh, section of the poetic Edda uh, amongst Norse and Germanic heathens. Um, and the the stanza that we picked for today, I like to, you know, read from a number of different translations and always if I have a guest as we do today talk about the meaning of the stanza amongst not just you know oh here's what it means to me but how does it hit you or how does it hit uh the the you know the person who I'm talking with and we you know open it up for discussion so um the 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 stanza for discussion today is um stanza 47 from the Havamal so anybody listening, watching, you know, whatever uh, translation of the Havamal that you read from, I read from a number of different translations. So we've got Auden and Taylor, Bellows, Bray, um, Hollander, which is always a fun one, Terry, Thorpe, and Jackson Crawford, specifically the uh, Wanderers Havamal. Um, so I'll start with the Auden and Taylor translation, which is... Uh, Let's see here. It's a uh, young and alone on a long road. Once I lost my way. Rich I felt when I found another. Man rejoices in man. Bellows translation reads, um, young once, young was I once and wandered alone and naught of the road I knew. Rich did I feel when a comrade I found, for man is man's delight. The Bray translation reads, young was I once, I walked alone and bewildered seemed in the way. Then I found me another and rich I thought me, for man is the joy of man. Hollander is young once I once, young, one, young was I once and went along and wandering lost my way. When a friend I found, I felt me rich. Man is cheered by man. The Terry translation reads, always as a young man, I traveled alone and I would lose my way. 
I felt I was rich if I made a friend. No man by himself is happy. Uh, the Thorpe translation reads, I was once young. I was journeying alone and lost my way. Rich, I thought myself when I met another man is the joy of man. And then in the uh, Jackson Crawford Wanderers, Havamal, finally we'll go. I was young once. I walked alone and I became lost on my way. I felt like I was rich when I met another traveler. People's joy is in other people. Now, I, uh, I feel like that is a, like, just, it, it's, it's random because, again, before talking to you, I didn't have, like, oh, I'm talking to Josh about wandering in the wilderness and finding, you know, having people who have never been in the wilderness before, uh, finding comfort and finding you know, value in another person and in another manner, you know what I mean? Like, and yet this is where we find ourselves. And I think that it, it really hits a nerve or it strikes a chord as it were about the fact that we as human beings are social creatures. Josh, you were talking about earlier uh, with the fact that when you launch this whole thing publicly, Father of Wolves Outdoors, during a time when social interaction was almost stripped mm -hmm. from humanity. There was this quarantine, there was this isolation, there was this focus on isolation. And you decided that that was a good time to publicly launch a business that focused on human interaction. And the, the fact that we are social creatures, we cannot survive on isolation, you know? Right. How does that, how does it, how does, how does all this like hearing it, hearing the different translations and stuff like, what is it, what, what do you think like stands out to you from, from, from your perspective? I mean, it's, it, it is ironic how that would, would play into what I'm doing. Uh, I get, I, I agree with you on that because the way, you know, I took that translation even through them all is someone, and even in myself in my life before, you know, I've always been deemed a lone wolf to, you know, by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and there's times in life where I've strayed away from things that I normally wouldn't do or around people and then have found myself come back full circle and feel more whole, so to speak, around those people in my life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's the same. You know, I, I just want to help people continue being happy and if you know that that's a pretty touching uh translations you did there man i, I like that one a lot because it's basically i feel like it's someone being straight away and finding wholesomeness amongst company yeah and company you know uh th that that's so much i feel that in modern heathenry or in modern paganism you know there's a lot of solo people, a lot of solo practitioners. There's a lot of folks out here that haven't found the social construct um, in their area that I think heathenry ultimately thrives in. Um, I feel like this particular path in paganism, this particular approach to heathen, you know, like we talk about different uh, polytheistic beliefs, you know, um, right this this one is is specifically socially and communally based there's it's almost like you can't appreciate and absorb the full benefit of what heathenry has to offer germanic heathenry has to offer without tribe without community without social interactions you know and your tribe right. doesn't have to be so in like it doesn't have to be a certain number of people like your tribe can be like for us here, you know, in my in in my area right now, at the time of this podcast, you know, our tribe is like three title carrying members and and family or whatever. Like it's 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 right. small and 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 whatever, but it's there's still that sense of family. There's still that sense of belonging 
to something. And I think that a lot of people nowadays are looking for that. Right. I don't know what if you get a sense of that in your area, but at least in our area, you know, a lot of people are looking to be a part of something and they don't know or they don't have any specific thing that they know that they can be a part of. And I feel like what you're offering, Josh, specifically in your area is a way for people to connect and to learn about right. things that they can uh, share with their people and whether it becomes tribal at the, at, you know, more people become a part of it. You're, you're planting a seed um, right. in a way, you know? Exactly. And, and then no matter where you look at it, like, like I said, I deem myself as a lone wolf individual, you know, I've been by myself most of my life and, and stuff, but I have my tribe and mm. that tribe is very important to me. You know, I have, I have abundance of friends that I like and that I care about, but I have my tribe, man. And, you know, yeah. that tribe is not one to mess with. That is the one that I help take care of and I help build the relationship with. And, uh, you know, what I look forward to being around, you know, them, them individuals, man. So uh, tribe is having your tribe, man, is, is very important. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one of the things that the internet overall has uh, cultivated, fortunately and unfortunately, is how easy we can connect with people. Right. Um, and sometimes that connection can, um, you know, like portray a, 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 a it mis, misportrays or misinter like just because you're good friends with somebody online don't mean that they're tribe. You know what I mean? Like doesn't mean that right. they're an extension of your family. Like there, there's a level of connection that you have to have with somebody. And I feel like the things like you're doing um, on a, on a, in a personal level, you know, you're literally taking people after you've talked to them and understand, like you've, you've set that expectation, but now right. like we're out, we're out going and we're doing the thing that builds a level of trust that cannot be built online over long distance. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> right. like, even though I've known you for several years, like I'm not going to trust you as much as I ever could. If I were to just, you know, go hiking for six, seven, eight miles right. in places that I've never been before, you know, like, yeah, we're cool. <laughs> like we know each other and that's, you know, we, we've met in person like that's happened, but I'm just saying like, right you're not going to experience that level of trust. You're not going to experience, you're not going to be able to experience not that you, it's not a, it's not an initial thing. You're not going to be given the opportunity to right. build that level of trust, that frith, you know, that, that mutual that trust, that mutual obligation between a human being without being with them in person. Exactly. And I feel like you're doing that in, in, in your way with, um, you know, father of the wolves. Um, so I applaud you for that. And I think you're doing a tremendous uh, level of, of service to the community. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you're able to offer, you know, going forward with, with everybody and anybody that wants to be a part of that. And I think anybody listening and watching that's respectively in our area that wants to, you know, take Josh up, you need to, you need to hit him up. So, you know, <laughs> check out the, uh, the show notes and the description and stuff and, 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 and book a session man, I, 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 you know, it, formally or informally, you know, my, my wife's family is, is in North Carolina. I have some family in North Carolina too, spread abroad, but, um, you know, when, uh, when, it, when, it, when it has the time allows and, and I'm like, Hey, you know what, let's, let's go get lost somewhere or try to. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you hit me up. I appreciate that, man. And just hit me up, man. I'll, I'll give you a good adventure, man. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, what you're saying is building that trust, man. Um, I, I want to have that with my clients and I want them to feel safe. Um, and, you know, and I do see that. And a lot of times, you know, they're nervous meeting me and, and it's like, okay, let's talk about it. And then we get out there and you can see that they're, they're, they're kind of at that point where it's like, oh, you know what? I don't know him, but I'm going to have to trust him. I wanted this. And then they start seeing the things and they see me put it together for them and, and making sure that they're comfortable and they got everything. Yeah. And then at the end, you know, they, you know, so, and, and you know, it's a business, you know, and there's those points at times, man, where like taking the money for it is like, 
it's not really, I don't do it for the money. You know, it's sure it's, if it could, you know, one day be my income full time, that'd be great. But, you know, it's more or less the reward I get from this is seeing these people happy and seeing them just overwhelmed with joy for the first mm. time ever seeing, you know, a 60 to 80 foot tall waterfall up close, you know, or standing on top of the Blue Ridge and actually overlooking just beautiful mountains. Um, and sometimes I like, I, you know, I feel bad about, I got to take your money because this is part of the business, but it's, it's, you know, just seeing the connection that, that happens with it, man. And, and do receiving the trust in the end is very important. Um, you know, and I just, again, man, I love connecting people with nature and, uh, showing them things that they never thought they would ever see, or just didn't think to look out there. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's tremendously valuable, and I think that uh, the more that people who haven't experienced it get to experience it, um, the better that they are uh, becoming equipped to um, service and provide for their own hearths and homes. Exactly. You know, um, and, and and show their tribe, hey, I've done this for a few times now. I want to go take my tribe out and teach them this and show them this. Yeah, you know, one of the things I tell people is you can step out in your front yard you can look up at the sky at night and see the stars but i can promise you unless you are miles and miles and miles away from civilization you'll never see the stars as beautiful they are until you're in that forest man and yeah. you know just the small things like that um that people would never think of or take for granted man and then they could get out there and just sit in a hammock and stare at these bright stars amongst the pines and stuff you know, oh yeah, small little things like that, man. Is is uh the outdoors has it, dude, and I just hope to connect more people with it. Yeah, and that that's tremendous, and I want to see that happen more. So everybody that's listening and watching, please, you know, check the show notes, check the description, um, for the ways that you can become a part of this. If you're in the area that you want to be, uh, you know, connecting with Josh and what he does. Again, it's Father of the Wolves Outdoor Adventures. Facebook. Um, there's going to be a website. I'm sure that, that that'll be updated on your social media as well. Yes. Um, yes. When so it, as it launches. Available. Yep. Yeah. As soon as it launches, I'll be sharing it out there, man, because I, I am excited to get that out there because um, I do get a lot of questions that come in um, and I'm limited in what I could do with the big cartel. And I was like, yeah. I've got to really fix this. Uh, so I'm really excited to get this launched, man. And uh, as soon as it's out there, it'll be shared. Sweet. So yeah, everybody um, that's listening and watching, check out the show notes, check out the description. That's a horse that I've beaten to death, <laughs> but happily <laughs> so. Um, Josh, Appreciate stay that. online uh, for just a second while I while we wrap the podcast up. But um, thank you so much for being on here today and taking the time out of your very, very busy and productive schedule um, to thank be you. on here. It's much appreciated. Thank you, Jesse. I enjoyed being on here, man. Awesome. It's great to have you. So uh, for everybody else that's listening and watching, you know, as always, be sure to uh, check the show notes for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings, whether you become a follower on all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, subscribe, follow, you know, the bit um, and all the other ways, you know, you can buy merchandise, you can um, send your donations, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. It's all notated in the description in the show notes. Thank you all for your continued support. And until we talk again, hail and may your hearth fires continue to burn bright.